to episode three of Utter Yarnage, the Bethy Boo podcast. This week you're joining me in a different location. Um, we've, I've been very lucky to be able to convert um, the room above the garage as my crochet cave for the time being. So there's lots of wool in here and all of my blankets and everything that I'm working on at the moment. So that's why I'm in a different location now. Very lucky to have this space. Um, it's been a few weeks since my last podcast. Um, it's been a very busy time, albeit you know inside. Um, the final placement for my PGCE started, um, so it's a virtual placement, which means I'm having to do lots of planning for an imaginary class at home, but I still um, got uni work and assignments to be doing. So um, it's been a little while since I've seen you all. Um, I've also been crocheting quite a bit in the evenings so I've got quite a bit to show you today which is a positive thing because um, I've been spending a lot of my downtime and my spare time um, doing crochet so I'm really excited to show you the stuff this week. Um, I've got a different pair of Becky Boo crochet earrings in this week. We've had a lot of rain over the last week here in um, Oxfordshire so I've got my little rain clouds in um, these have been quite popular on the um, Becky Boo Crochet site um, recently with all the rain that we've been having so I just thought I'd you know, pay a little homage to the rain we've had this week and wear them along with another um, rainbow jumper of mine and I have an extra rainbow jumper to show you this week so exciting stuff. So. Um, the first thing that I want to show you is my isolation creation blanket. Now it hasn't grown that much um, over the last few weeks because I've been working on other crochet projects. So let me just show you how, how big it is now. So I like this new setup by the way, this is great. Um, my partner for our anniversary bought me a, a stand for my phone, so it means that it's not leaning up against my laptop, which is what was happening before. Um, I've also got uh, this beautiful sign that my granddad um, sign, he's a sign, well he was a sign writer, so he's had the time to um, create this amazing sign for me, which I absolutely love. So this will be featuring in the background of um, future podcasts. Um, anyway, getting back to the isolation creation blanket, it's about this big now, so you can see, and because I've got this new setup, you can actually see the full size quite nicely. Um, I'm loving the way that the colours are working together. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with how this is coming on. However, I would like to be working on this a little bit more over the next week or so, so that it starts growing a little bit more. Um, now that I've finished a few projects, but I'm, I'm really liking it and what I'm, I'm planning to do um, is have quite a thick border around the outside. Now I haven't fully decided um, what kind of border I'm going to do yet, but it's going to be a thick border, unlike the border on this um, Attic 24 Cozy Stripe Blanket I've got behind me. This is quite a thin border going around because it's such a big blanket. Um, I only went round the whole blanket four times. Um, so I'm hoping to have something a little bit thicker for this isolation creation blanket but it really does depend on how much um, scrap yarn I've got left at the end that will suit the colour scheme. So um, I will keep you updated with this over the coming weeks. But yeah, this is great and it's been lovely to work on and lovely to pick the colours out. Um, so that's how the isolation creation blanket is coming along. Um, now without further ado, um, I know quite a few of you have been really excited to see how my um, rainbow jumper is getting on. Um, if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, and I'll leave the details at the end of the video and also in the description for the video if you would like to follow me on either um, Instagram or Facebook. Um, some people have already seen this because I've taken photos of the finished product and also modelled it myself in our garden outside when the weather was nice. Um, so I'm going to show you it now, but I'm, I'm so over the moon with this. I've been wanting um, a rainbow jumper for so long and it really makes it you know, more special that I've made it myself um, and you know, put the time and the energy into making it something that I know I'm going to wear. So here we go, this is the first ever Bethy Boo Crochet Rainbow Jumper. 
Um, so as you can see, it's made up of two big granny squares um, for the front and for the back, and they're slightly different. So the front side um, starts with red in the middle, um, and it goes red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and then like a kind of pinky purple. Um, so that's the colour order for the front granny square. And then the back granny square is slightly different because it does it in the reverse order. So you start with the purple and you work out the other way. And I quite like that because it means, um, you know, there's a slightly different front and back. Um, and then for the sleeves, you do two slightly smaller granny squares. And as you can see, um, it doesn't have as much white in the sleeves. And so you then fold them in half and do the seam up the side. Um, and then you sew it all together and you add a little hem around the front. So the hem at the front is slightly shorter here than the back. The back has got an extra two rows to make the back slightly longer, um, which I really like. So yeah, it's just great and I really like it. And the neckline is cool, so you've got like um, a tiny little um, finishing of white around the neckline. Um, I mean, it's it's not it's not dissimilar to this jumper in that it comes up quite high um, across your neck. Um, but it's just great and I really like it. The only downside to this jumper I would say if I would have to evaluate my work is that this is in the 8 to 10 size, um, which actually is still quite baggy. And I normally am a I'm normally a size 10, and if I want something baggy, then I buy size 12. So this is following the 8 to 10 size, and the front and the back, so the bit that goes around your body, is quite baggy. However, the um, sleeves I probably could have done with putting an extra two rows of the granny square on to make them slightly. Um, slightly looser around the arm, a bit like this jumper here, you can see that my armpit's actually quite up here but um, this doesn't, it's not tight underneath, so the seam isn't tight. So whereas this one, it, it does actually hug my arms quite a bit, so next time I would probably make the sleeve slightly bigger and um, adapt the pattern for my body a little bit better um, and then it would be the perfect jumper. But. Um, I've had a really great response to this online and I'm definitely considering offering this as a, um, a made to order product for Bethy Boo Crochet. Um, I've, my mum's already asked for um, a big jumper that's like, that she can use for lounging and it's going to have like pink, well colours not dissimilar to my isolation creation, it's going to have pink to replace the white and then different purple, greens and blues instead of the rainbow colours. Um, so that's so that's what I'm planning on doing for my mum. But if anybody else would, would be interested in a jumper like this, then please get in touch because I would more than happily cost up um, materials and time and then we can have a little discussion about what kind of jumper you'd like. So I'm just going to try this on because I really want to finish the rest of this podcast wearing it. So I'll be back with you in a little bit. So I'm back now, I've just put it on and as you can see it is a little bit tight around the arms um, and it could probably do with having a little bit more length, I, I don't mind the three, the three quarter length sleeves but for me personally I probably would have them a little bit longer so by adding an extra two rows, two or three rows to the granny square it would not only um, make the, this part of the jumper slightly looser around the armpit but also um, slightly longer on the arms but other than that I'm really chuffed with it and I know it's a bit like crochet overload right now with this and my earrings and the blanket behind me but um, I'm loving the colours and yeah it makes me happy and it's super soft so it's lovely to be able to wear it um, so what happened when I finished this jumper is I've kind of got a bit of an, an addiction now to making clothes to my, for myself um, this is the first item of clothing that I've made for myself that I actually would be willing to wear. I've tried things before, but they're not um, the type of thing that I'd want to be wearing. Um, it was more kind of to see, like to test my crochet skills and see how I get on. Um, so what I've done is I've started another jumper. So I found a free pattern on the Love Crafts website for a V-neck jumper. And what's brilliant about this pattern 
is that it goes all the way from um, an extra sort of small female size all the way up to what would be 2XL for a male, um, which means that you know any person can decide where they sit on that um, scale of sizes and make a jumper that would suit their body type. So I just thought it was a really versatile pattern and so what I thought I'd do is try all the pattern on myself um, and then if I really like it and, it and the jumper's a success then I will start probably making them for all of my family. I've always wanted to make Ben um, a jumper in like an ocean tealy kind of jade colour because um, it's his favourite colour. So if this pattern goes well then I'll probably make one for him. Um, but the thing that I have done with this pattern um, is that I've, I've adjusted it slightly to make it a cropped jumper because I quite like wearing cropped um, jumpers and t-shirts and things over high-waisted jeans and high-waisted clots and things. So um, I'll put the pattern here in case anybody's interested. The picture that's in the pattern is um, a child size jumper so it doesn't give a perfect um, picture of what the jumper will look like as a finished product but it does give you some idea about um, you know what it will look like so I've started in this beautiful yarn I'll bring it up close to the camera so you can have a look so it's um, variegated in colour um, and I will in a second I will show you what um, yarn this is. So this is the back piece for the jumper um, and I've never done ribbing before but this was so much fun having a go at doing um, a rib bottom for this jumper. So it's basically nine DC, um, DCs across, so nine double crochet across UK and then what you do is you work in the back loops only and then you turn every time and what it does is it creates this ribbed effect and it's also super springy and stretchy which is exactly what you'd want for the bottom of a jumper. So what I've done is I've adjusted the pattern slightly to be shorter. So obviously this is the back so I can't really show you on the front of my body would look, what it would look like. But I've adjusted this slightly so I think this was meant to be, for a medium size, was meant to be um, 13 inches long. Um, to go under the um, arm but because I wanted to be cropped I adjusted it slightly so I think it's 9 or 10 inches of this pattern and now I'm doing the section that's um, for the armhole so you can kind of see how it would work um, so this is the back and then the pattern is basically I love this because it gives it such a lovely texture it is basically alternate double crochets and treble crochets and it creates this beautiful kind of textured fabric um, and I think it works really well with this yarn. So the yarn I was using for this jumper is the Hayfield Journey Double Knit and this comes in um, lots of different colourways and I was gifted this by one of my granny's friends basically she bought it to me and she said that she wasn't going to use it anymore and I just I knew I had to make it into something lovely so this jumper is only going to take um, four of these so you only need four 100 gram skeins of any particular double knit for this pattern so that's also brilliant um, so you don't have to buy too much yarn but I will keep you updated on this um, I'm really chuffed with how it's coming on and I can't wait to wear it because I absolutely love this colour um, so the front is going to be obviously exactly the same apart from it's going to have a v-neck. So we'll see how that comes on but I'm so happy I'm making another item for myself to wear. Right sorry you can see my face again now. Um, that might be a good thing or a bad thing for some of you. Um, so that's the items of clothing that I'm making at the moment. Um, I've also been making um, different earrings over the last couple of weeks I think because people are at home and able to browse the internet a little bit more um, I've picked up like quite a few orders for crochet earrings so I've been doing flowers like I said I've been doing um, rainbow um, sorry rain clouds and I've been doing my rainbow design um, I'm also interested in maybe doing some sort of um, cheese leaf design or some well any kind of like little little green leaf I think that would be quite nice to do over the next few weeks 
Um, obviously, I ha it has come to my attention that um, there are a lot of similar designs for earrings online at the moment. And I created my designs three years ago um, with the backup of one of my friends at university. She suggested to me that I use my crochet skills and maybe make something that people would be interested in wearing in terms of earrings because she knew it would be like a niche market and at the time there was no um, there was no earrings with my designs or similar to my designs on um, Depop or on Instagram so obviously being only a very small business and doing this as a hobby alongside my degree and now my PGCE I haven't had much time to really put effort into um, selling my earrings and it really is just something I do as a bit a little, little bit of pocket money on the side to keep me going. Now I've been really really thankful to everybody over the last um, nearly four years now um, for supporting my little earring business and I, I'm, I'm over the moon with the amount of earrings that I've sold and all of the five star reviews that I've been given on Depop um, and the support I've been getting and I really appreciate everybody supporting a small business um, and, and letting me know and, and showing me pictures of them wearing them. Um, I've recently had like a few pictures of complete strangers, never met them, wearing my earrings and telling me that they, they get compliments out on the street for wearing them and it means so much to me that people would be you know, out there enough and love them enough that they'd want to wear them out and about in public. Um, it means so much to me. Um, however, I'm obviously aware that a few people online have been, I, w I don't want to say copying, but they have been imitating my designs very, very closely, imitating my content very, very closely. Um, and obviously, I know, and that's how, that's how fashion works. People imitate, people imitate designs. This jumper, I, I, you know, I've copied it from a pattern from the Simply Crochet magazine. I completely understand that. This is not my design. However, a lot of the earrings that I sell are my design. I did come up with them. So it is a little bit frustrating when I see people imitating. Um, but all I will say is that if you can, if you can continue to support small businesses and and just continue to support what people are doing, it means that we're able to come up with new designs and we're encouraged enough to put new designs out um, and that's all I ask to be honest is just people carry on like supporting smaller businesses and just I really appreciate everything that this little com crochet community has done for me over the last like three four years and um, yeah it means a lot to me um, I just wanted to make you guys aware that obviously you might see some designs online that are very, very close to the designs that I've been producing. Um, there's not much I can do about it, but I just wanted to say thank you for everybody who has bought from me over the last few years. Um, so in, with that in mind, I've been so chuffed over the last few weeks to have been contacted by um, a few different people about doing commissions. So I just wanted to show some of the stuff that I'm working at the moment because it's really exciting. So a friend of mine um, from school, um, you know, a few, obviously we were at school a while ago, but she is a friend that I had from school. Um, she commissioned me to do a baby blanket for her friend, um, day, like little baby Daisy. So um, I'll put a picture of that here. And then in response to that, I've had some people asking me to do similar designs for um, newborn babies that are coming into the world, which I'm very, very, very thankful for because it's so nice. It's so nice for me to know that there's going to be tiny little babies somewhere with something that I've made. Um, so I was contacted a bit by um, someone to do kind of like a, um, a yellow gender neutral baby blanket. Um, so it was a lot of fun picking the colours out. But these are the colours I'm going to be doing for the baby blanket. So we've got the Stylecraft um, Special DK in Lemon, Stylecraft Special DK in Citron, and then this one is specifically designed for babies um, because it's so soft. And this is the Special Stylecraft Double Knit for babies, and it's in cream. Um, and so these three colours are going to be um, together in like a gingham style um, 
solid granny square pattern. Um, so I've obviously, I've been working on them, so I've got stacks and stacks and stacks of um, little solid granny squares that I'm going to be sewing together into a gingham style baby blanket for that commission. So that's really lovely to be working on at the moment and I'll keep you updated with how that looks. And then I'm so excited for this next commission that I've been asked to do. So Ben's auntie contacted me saying that she really wanted a blanket this kind of size in um, colours similar to a map of Rome in her bedroom. Um, so I had a little look and played around with some of the um, colours in the Stylecraft range and um, as you guys know I love organising and designing blankets so I've made um, a little colour chart of the colours that I chose. So we've got tomato, spice, vintage peach, apricot, citron, buttermilk, lemon, meadow, cypress, lincoln, denim, cloud blue, spearmint, pale rose and powder pink. And these colours all match the um, map that she sent me that's in her bedroom at the moment. Um, so I, I, I managed to match them quite closely but what I didn't realise I've actually ended up doing is creating almost like a rainbow, um, yeah just matching like a rainbow but in like a, a, a pastely more powder um, colour than the one that I'm wearing obviously it's a bit more like you know toned down and subdued. So I first put this little card together with all the colours and then what I did is I made two swatches up. So I've done, I first of all did this one, so these, when the wool arrived, I then made a swatch up, so this is um, one colourway that I was thinking for the, for the stripes in the blanket. So you've got um, tomato, spice, vintage peach, apricot, citron, buttermilk, lemon, meadow, cypress, lincoln, denim, cloud blue, spearmint, pale rose, powder pink. So. That was one possible colourway for the blanket and then I thought, I played around a little bit more and I thought that the pinks looked a little bit odd down the bottom if it was meant to be like a colour wash or rainbow. So then what I did was I made another swatch up and what I did was I swapped a few of the colours around and I, I personally prefer this one. Um, so this is tomato spice, vintage peach, apricot, pale rose, powder pink, buttermilk, citron, lemon, lincoln, cypress, meadow, spearmint, cloud blue, denim. So I swapped them around a little bit um, so that these two are slightly different if you can see. And then what I did was I contacted um, Ben's auntie and said which one do you prefer and she did in fact prefer the second swatch that I did. So this blanket is going to be in the Woodland Ripple by Attic24 because that's what she um, requested. So I haven't managed to do that much on this blanket yet. Um, it's only been a day or two since the wool actually arrived. Um, but I've managed to do the first few stripes. So I've done the foundation chain and the first um, set of double crochet in um, the tomato colour and then I've started the ripple in spice and vintage peach which is the same as the swatch that she chose um, and I'll obviously be working in each colour in the order and then repeating the colour order for a total of 105 stripes of colour but that is 210 rows. So every colour in the um, blanket um, has a row of um, treble crochets and then the gaps where you miss you miss one miss a stitch and then you turn and then you work in the top of those treble crochets you work in front loops only um, a set of double crochet so that is two rows per colour and there's 105 stripes of colour and two rows per colour so that is 210 rows so it's going to take me a while but um, I really enjoy working on this and to be honest I am so flattered to have been contacted about designing a blanket that no one else will have no one else will have this blanket 
is going to be completely um, individual for this, you know, for this customer, for Ben's auntie. Um, so I'm, I'm really pleased about it and um, as you guys know, I always plan my blankets out and um, in the back of here I've got the colour order so that I can um, tick off <laughs> the colour once I've put them in. So I have really, I have really planned this out and really thought about it um, and I'm very excited to be working on it. I think I'm going to get to the end of it as I always do with every project I work on and not want to give it away. But it means so much to me that someone is going to have a blanket this size in their home which, which matches something in their room. And um, Ben's auntie lives over in Ancy in France so it's going to be going all the way over to France. So <laughs> that is everything that I've been working on over the last few weeks. Um, I've got a couple of projects still on the go as you know. I've got the woodland blanket for my parents still on the go. Um, I've got a couple of smaller things like the rainbow striped um, scrap yarn scarf um, and obviously I've been working on all these different commissions, the isolation creation blanket and my next jumper but I am so chuffed, this is the main event for this podcast, I am so chuffed that I have managed to finish this um, and I, I only want to make more. I'm just going to make more in every colour possible. With all the scrap yarn that I've got, I've got so much. Um, I'll do a little tour at some point of all of the yarn that I've got. Um, with all the yarn that, scrap yarn that I've got, I know I can make more of these. Um, I'm also thinking for a future podcast cast episode that um, I might do um, kind of things that I've made before, so past, past makes. Um, so I can show you like the different blankets that I've made, um, some of the different shawls and scarves and cowls that I've made um, and if that's something that you guys are interested in then just let me know because um, you know some of these things that I make, I make them and then no one ever sees them, it's something that I just use myself so if you're interested to see past things that I've made just let me know in the comments or contact me on Instagram um, but thank you so much for staying and listening again guys. Um, I hope this was interesting um, And you know what stay safe Stay positive stay colorful stay sunny stay flowery and we will get through this I'm getting through it by becoming a crazy crochet lady, but that's how I roll. That's what I do So um, I will hopefully see you guys soon Thank you for coming and watching again and I'll see you soon. Bye.